My dear brothers and sisters, today we join the universal family in praying and recognizing the challenges of our brothers and sisters, the widows and the widowers. And in a special way, we reflect on the widows. And in a special way too, as a parish family, today we pray and give thanks to God for the gift of fathers. Listening to the readings that we have heard, today the Lord continues to deepen more on the theme that he introduced last week. In a sense, he reminded us that there is a power in the word of God. And that the power in the word of God is able to transform human hearts and human persons by itself. Just like a seed, by its own nature, is able to break the soil and sprout. And so he said that the manifestation at the end of the day, that this is a true seed of the Lord. Is that this little seed grows into a big tree that different birds can come and shelter and enjoy. In a sense, reminding you and I that the indicator of my maturity in faith is the ability of the diversity of different people and the relationships that I have, that I encounter, on how they really benefit from my existence. And hence, today, in a special way, he emphasizes again the power of his word, that he was able by his word to determine even in the first reading where the oceans should stop and even where the waves should stop. And you see him even telling, manifesting the same reality in the gospel. That Jesus is able by his word to calm the waves. And say, I command you that there is a power in the word of God to transform us into be true, mature human beings. And the sign of our maturity is our ability, therefore, to love the way God has loved us. And the love that endures forever. And hence, looking at that, and he says in the second reading in a special way, that therefore when you and I are stopping and trying to assess this, we should reflect and see, at the end of the day, why am I living? Why am I living? As a Christian community, why do we exist? As a parish, why do we exist? As an individual, why do we exist? That hopefully, experiencing the love of God manifested in Christ, in its ultimate manifestation through his sacrifice of death on the cross, that you and I can therefore identify with him as already identified as brothers and sisters in a baptism born with him, that therefore you and I can identify and realize that we live not for ourselves, but for Christ, for the Lord. And therefore, because I live for the Lord, not for myself, what matters primarily is not of the flesh, but of the spirit, that I relate ultimately, therefore, inspired by the spirit of God. And how does this, how do you and I assess this? How do I assess that I'm really being inspired by the spirit of God? That really when they eat this flavor of the fruit, that whoever encounters me and if eats this can have the flavor of the true spirit of God. That manifests a person, a community, a people that exist for the good of the other. That is to do everything but for the good of the other. And today you then and I can reflect and ask, how do the widows experience the Christian community? Do they get comfort? Do they get support? from this Christian community? How do the widows experience you? How does someone who has become a widow in your family, the extended family, 
to which you belong, what's your advocacy? When there are the challenges for this widow and these orphans, what's your advocacy for them? Does it manifest a mature Christian? Does it manifest a, a clan, a family, a people that welcomes and is existing and is there for the good of the other? And most especially, the most vulnerable. That you and I are then challenged to be, to assess and see the space we create. Do you treat a widow, irrespective of her sex, as a human being like you? That one deserves a dignity like you. That you created in the image and likeness of God. That you relate to this person beyond the body but look at the dignity of the person that we are all created in the image and likeness of God that that humbles you and I to realize that all of us created in the image and likeness of God all of us feel pain all of us feel joy that we are all called to feel joy not pain not anguish, not misery. And that you and I are called, therefore, to join Christ in making all the necessary sacrifices for such disadvantaged that are in our immediate to feel a relief. And that you and I can join and identify with them to help them regain their dignity. And that they, too, can look unto the Lord and can trust that the Lord provides and the Lord cares. And that you and I can look at all our cultural behaviors and values and assess and see whether they provide space, fairness, care for the victims of death. that you and I today, in a special way, we recognize our fathers. We want to thank God for the gift of who you are and for the sacrifices that you make for the family. They're not easy, but we pray that today you examine in a special way how you are truly a mature seed of God. A tree that in your family has had can allow and work tirelessly for all. That you can transcend before the flesh. That you relate to your wife not because she was so beautiful, not because she's so nice, not because she's the best, but so that she may become the best that you love her and care for her so that she may become the best. Not because she is the best. And that's the love of God that creates, that enables us to be better. He loved us while we are still sinners. And that in so doing, you and I manifest, and especially your fathers, will manifest the sense of maturity of the Spirit of God. And that you will get tempted to test whether you are almost relating to your wife because of the flesh. That when the flesh, even the beauty, that maybe was the point of attraction, if you don't correct your attitude, if you don't allow the word of God to purify your attitude, if you don't allow the word of God to make you bear the fruit that is inspired by the spirit, that you do what you do because you are a servant of God. Because you are obeying the will of God. Because you are listening to the spirit of God. That alive or dead, you belong to the Lord. That you allow all you do ultimately be for the Lord. And that in that sense, you and I will be able to look and relate to your family, to the people around you beyond the flesh. 
beyond the blood, but as a mission that God has given you to look after them. That all people that you encounter becomes, and your relationship with them goes beyond the blood, symbolized in the flesh, that goes to the spirit, that you do what you do for your children, not because they are your biological blood, but because it's a mission that God has entrusted it to you. And they happen to be the first people you know, their needs best, because they live with you. And hence, naturally, you attend to their needs faster, because you know their needs most. And amidst this to them might be a variety of people that will test whether it is true that you are working and tirelessly sacrificing as a Christian, as a, as a disciple of Christ, as an ambassador of Christ, or as any other human being. And the best test that might happen will be in your family. You may get an orphan. How do you treat this orphan in relation to those that relate to be your blood? Because that will reveal what deeply influences you. Whether there is something that the word of God still needs to prune in your life. And I think today, one of the best examples and the best realities is, I think DNA provides another very interesting circumstance. That you look at these kids and you doubt them. What's your relationship with them? What's your attitude? What's your decision? How do you receive them? How do you relate to those kids that you doubt? And maybe you can go ahead and test and prove that actually they are not your blood. If you are not a Christian and you are just purely human and relating to the flesh, then certainly your behavior and your reactions are going to be so overwhelmed by the human relation. Doesn't mean it will be easy, but if you allow the Spirit of God, if you allow the Word of God to humble you and purify you and make you therefore one who lives not for yourself but for others and for the Lord, that hopefully you can be able to say deep in your heart, Maybe he's not my child. Maybe she's not my child. I adapt you if you are not. If you are not, I adapt you. And I'll do all I can do for you as a mission that you know deeply above all, after all, all God has given me. It is very unfortunate. You may go into the story of how did it happen, what happened, that's another story. But the fact of the reality, that this is there. And maybe you go and test and prove in all efforts you have done that this is not your true blood. If you have not allowed the word of God to purify your relationships, that all you sacrifice for, beginning for anybody around you, is not because they are your flesh, not because they are your blood, but because of Christ, then then you will see whatever way this child came into your family as God asking you to serve this innocent, vulnerable creature and support it in the way you would support any and leave the impossible and the others to God. And I can tell you, if you allow the Spirit of God to guide you, you will never regret. For you may be shocked that the rejected stone might become the cornerstone. But only if you persevered. And hence, the Lord is telling you and I that it's very important that we allow the word of God to purify the attitudes, our attitudes and the intentions of all we are and all we do. And that fathers, you have a special place in the family and a great opportunity to manifest and direct your family into a home that everybody can feel 
lucky to belong. You can say, how lucky I am. If it was not for your love. That in that sense you manifest a unique love. That even to your wife, who may have done all that to you, you may remember, if God would mark my guilt, who of us would survive? That maybe you never loved her good enough that led her to fall. That if I loved you good enough, maybe you wouldn't have fallen. That if I have doubts, that I may increase more love. And if you, a woman, doubt your husband, then love her most. That that love will transform him and will make him better. And if you have doubts of your wife, increase the love of Christ. Care for her. Be good for her, even when you doubt. Pray hard that God may give you the strength. And that will change her. That will change him. And we pray for you, fathers, recognizing the challenges and the sacrifices you have to make. But I remember, hopefully, you can do them for the Lord. That all you do, you do it for the Lord. And if you remember, you'll have to carry crosses. And that might become the cross that you have to carry. The humiliation, the embarrassment. But if you did it for the Lord, you say, Lord, I accept the humiliation, the embarrassment, but I'm glad that I've given this child the best that I could have done. The Lord be with you.